Welcome to the podcast series, Reducing the Risk of Severe Illness for Patients with COVID-19. This podcast is part of a micro-learning library on the testing, diagnosis, and treatment of severe illness for patients with COVID-19. This education is brought to you by the France Foundation and supported by an educational grant from Pfizer. Listen as Drs. Christopher King, a pulmonologist from Inova Fairfax Hospital, and Lisa Lancaster, a pulmonologist from Vanderbilt University Medical Center, discuss the return of COVID-19 symptoms and seropositivity after treatment. Hi, I'm Dr. Christopher King, and I'm pleased to be joined by Dr. Lisa Lancaster, who's a professor of medicine at Vanderbilt University Hospital in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, Good to see you, Lisa. Good to see you. Um, This is a continuing uh, podcast series on different topics uh, related to COVID. And we've talked a lot about, you know, how to deal with the patient who tests positive for COVID, who to treat with medications. And I think, um, you know, we're getting more and more experience with with antiviral medications in the outpatient setting. One interesting scenario that's come up recently is the phenomenon of sort of rebound symptoms after treatment with an oral antiviral antiviral therapy. You know, I got a call probably two, three weeks ago from one of our cardiac surgeons, and he had recently had a COVID infection, had kind of upper respiratory symptoms, fever, kind of classic COVID symptoms. And uh, and he took this therapy, felt better. And then after he finished his course of an oral antiviral therapy, he said, all my symptoms came back and I retested myself. I had been testing negative and now I'm testing positive. And he's like, what's going on? What would you tell uh, this cardiac surgeon uh, colleague of mine? Yeah, I think that's a great question. We're kind of all learning as we go with this, but it's essentially what you said. It's a rebound situation where symptoms return even after treatment and then the positive rapid antigen test. Uh, returns. And usually that's about what, like several days after the initial improvement and maybe even after conversion to negative testing uh, following treatment. Um, I I think the best thing is that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe there have been no reports of any severe disease that have occurred with uh, the rebound symptoms. And right now, I don't think anybody's actually using uh, the antivirals in a second course after that. But I think most patients, at least that we know of, um, do okay, but they do have to go back on isolation with that. Yeah, that's my understanding as well, that there's not really been a reported case of kind of reemergence of symptoms that led to severe illness or hospitalization. And for that reason, it's recommended to you know, not treat again with a second course of antivirals. Uh, The patients can feel good about and somewhat reassured by the fact that that none of these really severe cases uh, has happened. But like you said, unfortunately, you know, you're now testing positive and you kind of have to restart that isolation period all over again. Yeah, I think it's kind of a unique testament to COVID how we've seen responses to the same viral pathogen be so unique in different individuals and, you know, how our own immune response and genetics may play a role in that. We've kind of yet to discover, but I'm sure that has some factor in the response. Would the rebound of symptoms after oral antiviral therapy sway you to avoid prescribing it in this population? Well, I think it's uh, what we have. Um, And certainly we have another antiviral that is not quite as effective, um, but may have fewer drug interactions. Um, So I think until we have something better, I think that's, you know, the option that we have to deal with recognizing the possibility. Um, Is it the actual virus and how it responds or lack of response to therapy? Or is it actually, does the therapy have something to do with it? I don't think we really know the answer to that. I mean, mean, the advice I've been giving patients if they ask about this, because it's been in the lay press and and people are sort of aware of it. You know, I say if you're an at-risk patient, um, you know, this could reduce your risk of hospitalization, reduce your risk for severe COVID. So even though there's that small risk that you're going to have rebound symptoms, it wouldn't dissuade me from prescribing it to you. Um, However, if somebody doesn't really meet the criteria 
and shouldn't be on oral antiviral therapy in the first place. They don't really have any of those risk factors. In those cases, I say, you know, uh, monitor your symptoms, let us know if it looks like you're developing severe disease, but maybe for, I would forego treatment, you know, since it wouldn't necessarily have been appropriate in the first place. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, how did your friend, the cardiologist or surgeon do? Uh, he's back and operating now, so he's happy about that. Uh, he was out of work uh, for a little bit longer uh, period of time, but eventually recovered and just like uh, we said, didn't develop any severe symptoms and had a relatively truncated course, you know, five more days of isolation and then was able to come back with a mask. Mm, that's good news. Good to hear. Well, you know, that kind of covers everything that we wanted to talk about. And I appreciate your time today and I appreciate the attention of our audience. Thanks for uh, having me and I enjoyed the discussion. Earn CME by clicking the link for credit. And be sure to check out the other podcast episodes in the library.